hello guys welcome and welcome back to another video and this is our first graphic designers q and a the long awaited video and here it comes as you all know my name is dennis joshua and i'll be answering all the questions that were sent to me over the days which this particular video was advertised and let's roll in the intro subscribe and click on the bell so you won't miss any video all right before i start um shout out to everyone at chuxi biz venture shout out to ut best media my good people i love those people so much and i won't forget creativity 2020 those people are wonderful people it's a whatsapp group where graphic designers gather and share ideas i'll put a link on the description if you're interested to join that group it's a very nice group and i won't forget my good people in that group the fellow people that are helping to make the group to move forward i appreciate you for your good work and i would like to appreciate my patreon family people that have been supporting me and if you are interested to support this channel i'll put a link down in the description so you can always support this channel with the little token that you have thank you so much for supporting and also i would like to thank everyone that has been supporting me on this channel helping me to grow with the advice and every other tips to help me grow this channel because very soon we'll be hitting 1000 subscribers and i would let you know that day when it comes thank you so much for being there so let's go into the video graphic designers q and a this q and a is good okay the first question comes from samuel praise my designs sometimes becomes dull when i send it to my phone how can i solve this okay before you say your design is dull first of all try to know the kind of screen you are using to view the design because phone screens differ very well most times i do design a job and i put it on my phone and it will be nice on my screen but when i send it to my client's screen it looks very dull and it looks as if the whole job is something else so most times consider that fact how is your phone screen how does it look and also you know when you are designing if you are designing for a print you use cmyk and if you are designing for a digital purpose you use rgb so most people design with cmyk and send it to a phone and you know your phone your laptop and every other screen they use rgb light on the screen so you don't expect a design that was made with cmyk to be perfect on a rgb screen it's only when you print it out that it will look nice but when you are designing for a digital purpose you use rgb because the rgb will match with the rgb light on your screen making your designs to come out very well so consider that fact and maybe most times your colors the, your choice of colors are not always uh, working together maybe you use cmyk and rgb to design like what i saw someone use rgb and cmyk like the design i reviewed on this channel someone used cmyk and rgb to design at the same time and that gives you what we call color riot so don't use cmyk and rgb to design at the same time choose your color for your purpose if you are designing for a print use cmyk if you are designing for a screen a design that will end on a screen either on your phone or your laptop you use rgb and it will match very well okay so consider this fact try to see if your phone calibration the color calibration is okay okay because i see most screens are not always done well especially um the desktops the monitor you see their screen uh they are a lot always there are always a lot of variations on their screen because the calibration is not always okay so my recommendation is choose a perfect color to design rgb for screen cmyk for print and also check if your phone screen has a problem and try sending that same design to other phones so you see the difference okay graphic designers q and a this q and a is good all right and the next question comes from uh nya joel nya joel okay and this question says what are the various ways of designing a text in photoshop and just like the one on your q and a design above 
okay in your draw i know you are trying to talk about the design like if you've seen the advert i use for this q and a video and um, this is the advert here and um you can see the q uh, the graphic designers q and a how it is done all right there is something i call um focal point in a design your focal point your focal point is that element in your design that catches the attention of your viewer the first element you want to use to catch the attention of your viewer that is your focal point and your focal point should be designed in such a way that it's so interesting such that someone will see it and in fact that is the way the beauty of your design comes from so you have to put all your ideas your creativity everything you know about graphic design you have to put it to make your focal point pop like in this design my focal point is the graphic designers q and a because i want anyone that sees this design the first thing you see is that graphic designers q and a and it looks very nice and talking about how to design such text like that um there are a lot of ideas about this in fact there are numerous and more i'm still yet to discover more of them there are so many ways of designing it all i will advise is get to know other professional designers see the way they design whenever you see anybody's design like that try to do something similar because there are a lot of ways to do this you need to know the rules of design you need to know the tools to do this for example i add shadows i add contour most times i use perspective effects and i use envelope tools. i use all these tools to make my design pop okay so i'm going to show you example of how to design a text like this though there are so many ways but i just want to do something different i want to show you something different let's go to graphic designers q and a this q and a is good so this is my corel draw and i want to design this here um graphic designers Q and A. Okay, so this is what I'll be designing. And I'm going to use the typeface Petras. Now, when designing your uh, focal point, try to use uh, typeface that are bold. Example, like this bold font here, Petras. Or you can use many other bold fonts. Either it's a bold font or it's a calligraphy a script font but let it be a font that can be read from far distance okay then i'm going to design this you know most people like using same colors or um you can also use a few color gradient you can also use any any way you want to go about the colors but let's just see what i can do here like now uh q and a i fix it here now as it is it's nice okay it's nice with black like this depending on the type of design you are doing okay and um you can choose to use blue like this blue and it looks good and you can choose to use with orange like this it still looks good or you can still use blue all together like this it looks okay it depends on what you really want then you can add many types of effects like the one I did on that, what I think I, I used uh, um, a perspective effect. Okay, I duplicate this, send it to the back, like this. And, and now apply, click on effect, sorry, object. Click on object and click on add perspective. Then adjust it to what you want it to look like that is perspective effect okay exactly how you want it to look like there are different ways to design this stuff you can choose to add a few color like this maybe on this graphic designer q and a you add this other color like this centralize adjust a few like this elliptical It all depends on what you want and how you want it to be so this is also another way of designing it there are many ways now 
there are numerous thousands of ways to design a focal point I, even me myself i'm yet to discover more of them but my advice is there are a lot of professionals that can do this very well okay there are a lot of professionals that can do this very well so try to imitate them go through their design see the way they did it see the tools they use and the way they did it so this one q and a video will not be able to teach you the whole stuff but with the little idea i've given to you that your focal point is the part where you have to put more creativity and a lot of work on to make your design pop out okay and my recommended tools in corel draw you can use to do this are extrude to contour shadow to uh, drop shadow to okay and you also have bevel bevel effect you can do bevel effect or you can add the perspective effect let me show you what the bevel effect looks like okay um let me type d okay and let me show you how the bevel effect looks like um let me use this typeface and give this color come to effect and click on sorry click on bevel and you click on soft edge apply you see how it looks like if you click on emboss apply you also see how it looks like now this type of effect you can adjust how you want the effect to be and um, the intensity the direction and our altitude okay okay let me drop it here so this is how it actually looks like the distance so that is bevel effect all these effects you can learn them because you can't learn all at the same time you just have to take them one at a time whenever you see anybody's design you like the way the person did the focal point try to imitate it i myself that's how i started by learning from other designers so you pick other people's design that you know you love so much and you like the way they design the the focal points you can always imitate them and you do what they do how they did it and that's how I started I pick other people's design and I try to do exactly what they did and at the time I started creating mine because the the ways of designing a um, focal point they are numerous you just have to be creative to do it but if you can't add much effect you can just simply keep your design simple stupid use the keys rule keep it simple stupid just type your font make it big and and off you go put a nice color and off you go it's not a must that you must always make it all that creative like that it depends on what you're actually doing like most times all these effects applies to flyer designs when you are designing a flyer or when you are designing a branding stuff like that you can apply all these effects and it looks cool so i'm going to show you examples of designs i've done and how i've used i've made the focal point and use all these effects to do it let me just give you a break while you go through those designs welcome back i hope you love the designs and how the focal points were all done now in this channel we teach graphic design and do flyers and all those stuff like that so you always learn like the one i did yesterday you saw the effect i did on the swimming in the supernatural it was nice for as many of you that watched the video if you did not watch the video i'm going to put the link on the description so you watch the video and you enjoy it okay so i did that video and the effects there was perspective effect it was cool okay so you can learn how to design focal points like that 
so in your dwell sir <laughs> i know um, that's your question i believe i've answered your question now this applies to all graphic design software it's not corel draw alone why i'm using corel draw it's because in this channel we do lots of design tutorials with corel draw and I, most people that watch my videos are corel draw users though other graphic design software users also watch you know most people they like to revolve around different softwares now this channel is revolving from stage to stage for now let's just submit corel draw let's break down corel draw everything about corel draw and with time we move to other softwares like photoshop and illustrator and every other every other one but for now let's finish corel draw course i can't be climbing a ladder with two different things i can't go up with different things i have to take one up there come back take the other one up there so i believe i've answered your question graphic designers q and a this q and a is good okay the next question comes from aom digital okay and um, this question says how much can i charge for a design be it wedding card jota id card and so on all right about pricing of job okay um it's not actually easy to price a job but i will recommend you price a job based on your skill how you know you are how competent are you to yourself how sure are you how is your expertise skill can you stand the chance to tell someone i will design this job for uh, ten thousand naira and your skill is worth that ten thousand naira if your skill is not worth it then decline okay just go for what you know you can do because most times when you give someone a price that is high and the person feel like what is he going to design for me and it's like um after the whole job at the end of the design the person sees something else different from the price so first of all know your what you know you are you can do this and you give your price based on your expertise okay and another way i would recommend is this look at the type of client that is coming to you is he willing to pay more on this job or not depending on how the job looks like um let's take our uh, minds to us you know there they pay designers pay ah uh, everybody working there they pay them to uh, they pay them pay ah uh. but here in nigeria here in africa our case is different you pay pay job no matter how stressful the job is and less stressful the job is that is it but my own case i have my price tag for all my designs like i have the least price for all my designs then what i do is when i look at the client if my client is capable of paying more i give him price more and if the job is too tedious and large enough that is how the price increases for example my flyer designs the least price i can give for my flyer design is 1000 depending on your level but there are people that will come to me and i tell them that the price for the flyer design is 3000 or 4000 naira, depending on the kind of person that is coming to me or if it's a company i know how to deal with those stuff then there are people that uh, that come to me and i i tell them my flyer design is 1500 naira or i tell them 2000 naira, depending on what i want to do for them okay but the least i have is 1000 i can't go down below 1000 naira okay then for cover designs like wedding jota those cover most times i charge them 1000 for the cover alone then if it has inside i can charge 2000 extra so let's just say 3000 to 5000 for wedding designs and above depending on the set of people coming your way and your packaging you know packaging matters a lot when it comes to business okay the way you package your designs the way you do it it looks very cool because you don't expect a an expert to charge the same price as a beginner the beginner do not have enough to offer okay look i'm not looking down on the beginners okay i'm only saying their skills is limited to some way so most people won't like to pay for what they know it won't go well for them and here in africa that it's very hard to charge a job you know designers are everywhere and most designers because they say okay they'll say um i know someone that will design this job cheaper than what you are telling me because they know there are designers everywhere and a lot of beginners we always do it because they don't have a choice they have to do it so based on your pricing set standards for your price set 
price tag for all your designs and get used to the price tag that anyone that comes to you you simply tell them this is my price for this but if this person is a family member you can always tell them okay maybe you want to favor your family member you say this design i do it for so so price but um for you i'm going to give you discount but in the next job i will always add and go back to my standard okay you have a standard price for all your designs that is no matter what happens you still fall back to your list price which you don't cross but when you look at the type of client that is coming your way and they can pay more that is what you do okay that's my idea actually if you have any other idea about this you can do it but that's how i go about my pricing graphic designers q and a this q and a is good and the next question still come from aom digital which says how can i create a cool calendar on corel draw now this question i don't know which part to answer because talking about calendar we are talking about two things the calendar itself and the calendario the calendario is the part that has the january february march till december okay now creating the calendario has different ways to do it okay when you when you uh generate the calendario on your um, corel draw with your calendar wizard there are ways to design it and it looks cool okay and i don't want to go to a long tutorial here by starting to design a calendar here i can only show you samples of calendar design so you get ideas from there okay now it's simple you do your normal design and bring in the calendar wizard you generate your calendar then you manipulate the calendar to the way you want it either you want it to be two lines like six six months or you want it to be three by four months or you want it to be four by three months okay then that is how it done you design it i'm going to show you samples of calendar because I don't have to waste much time on this question though we have lots of tutorials that will be coming up on calendar design still on this channel and i've done about uh, i've done one calendar design on this channel so you can check it down our videos and you see it okay graphic designers q and a this q and a is good now the next question comes from um samuel praise and it says can you do a video on how to draw different types of shape <laughs> now there are many types of shapes which you need to know how to draw now i can't make a video on how to draw different types of shape but i can tell you how to draw different types of shape using the different tools you know as a graphic designer you can use the pen tool bezier tool there are lots of tools there for you to use okay let's go to corel draw let me show you now this is um rectangle tool where you used to draw rectangles then when you click and hold there you see three points rectangle which you can use to draw every other type of shape okay like now i click and drag down here okay and i'm able to do this now that rectangle tool helps you to draw rectangles okay then if you click on the ellipse tool and drop down the same way you use the rectangle tool that's the same way you use the ellipse tool and if you click here where you have numerous shapes you see polygon you click on your polygon you see polygon now polygon helps you to create different types of polygon here you can make it six seven depending on the type of polygon you want to make okay then that is for polygon but if you click and hold you see star spiral then if you click on common shapes and you click here this is where you see a drop down of different types of shapes you want to draw but if the shapes you need they are not here you can use your pen tool to create custom shapes and i have used the pen tool so much to create different shapes here during my design tutorials i've used the pen tool to create different types of shape just as what you can see custom shapes you can use the pen tool bezier tool and every there are lots of tools under here freehand tool which you can use to create any kind of shape you want so telling me to make a video on how to create different types of shape i know it's not bad okay but you know i have to consider the fact that i'm telling you the only the tools i need to tell you the tools then you use it to create any shape you want to create okay now i've shown you how to create the rectangle tool i've shown you how to create the ellipse tool and i've shown you where to get basic shapes where to get a lot of shapes and if your shapes are not there the shape you want they are not there you use your pen tool to create your custom shape okay graphic designers q and a
and the next question comes from Abubaka from Syria loan and it says how can I save a picture with PNG format in Corel draw so it comes with no background okay um it's very simple now assuming I want to save this okay let me let me create this shape like this uh, nice now this stuff has just um this now this is a cross and it has no background there is no background actually on it it's just this cross and i want to save it as png so it comes with no white background okay when you press on ctrl e on your keyboard that is to export then you see this bar save as like you click and hold then you see png portable network graphics png then you export it won't come with any background but when you save it as jpeg it will come with background that's white background okay now this applies to every other software in photoshop you save it as png okay so when you want to export any file any design as png and you don't want it to come with any background just save it as png or export it as png and it won't come with any background okay graphic designers q and a this q and a is good okay now the next question comes from um glory abaja and it says how do i know 10 or 20 percent yellow of any color and this brings us to hue saturation and value and also uh, tint and tone now you need to know this it's very important as a graphic designer to know tint and tone that is the lightness or the darkness of any color simply the lightness or darkness of any color the lightness is the tint and the tone is the darkness of a color let me show you how to go about that when you look at your corel draw the color palette bar it has 100 percent of colors okay except the shades of black and the shades of white that's the grayscale colors here now um assuming this and this it does not apply to only yellow every color has its own tint and tone now i'm going to use this this is 100 percent yellow and this is 100 percent uh, magenta and i want to use tint on the yellow now assuming this is white now to tint a color simply add white to a color to tint a color and simply add black to a color to turn a color that is the lightness and the darkness the black is the uh, darkness and the white is the lightness so assuming i want to tint this white sorry i want to tint yellow i will press control on my keyboard and add white and you can see it's actually going down now watch this look at this place this is where you get the percentage of all your colors now my yellow is 53 percent and if i continue adding white it keeps on reducing 43 and 39 and uh, 35 31 and that's how it goes down till it becomes zero percent yellow okay and the same thing to magenta here if i keep on adding white you can see down here it's reducing it's actually reducing okay and that is how you get to know it now assuming this is white and i need 10 percent yellow click that press control on your keyboard and click on yellow you can see it's 10 percent if you click again you have 19 percent click again you have 27 percent then if you want to customize it you don't want to do it that way simply click here double click there and this dialog box comes up then you can simply type the percentage of color you need okay can simply type here here yeah, this way you see your cnyk rgb and every other stuff but focus on your cnyk since your yellow is cnyk okay then you can simply type 10 percent then okay and your yellow automatically becomes 10 percent if i need 20 percent i do the same thing there and i'll type here okay let me say 40 percent and i have 40 percent yellow so that's how to go about it and it applies to every other color and if i want to tone a color i'll simply add black and you can see it's changing i'm turning the magenta and it turns to purple because it's a mixture of black now okay same thing to yellow you see that but most times you shade it with a similar color like this 
maybe like um, yellow you add orange to it because that's how i actually tone my color i don't just tone it with direct black okay if it's yellow i tone it with orange or red then if it's red i can tint it with yellow okay if it's magenta i tint magenta with this blue purple here and that's how i go about all that stuff you can always learn it with other colors just adding white adding shades of the other color adding white black to tint and to, and then you can adjust the percentage of the color where i showed you down the corel draw at the bottom part of the corel draw so that is how to tint and how to know 10 percent 20 percent of a color it will always show there once you click on any color you always see like now it's actually magenta that's 100 percent magenta okay if you click on red you see 100 percent red it shows red but once you add white to it it reduces and you see it's now 90 percent yellow and 90 percent magenta that is to say that red is made up of magenta and yellow okay and that is it graphic designers q and a this q and a is good and the next question comes from matthew solomon and his question says as a graphics novice i want to know how to mix colors and fonts now it is a very big challenge that's the biggest challenge as a graphic designer how to mix colors and fonts how to choose colors and fonts for your design it's very important as a graphic designer and you might know every other stuff but if you don't know how to choose your colors and fonts then you are missing out okay let me start with fonts okay choosing a font or choosing a typeface um there is this rule that you should use at least only three typefaces okay maximum of three and list of two typefaces when designing one interesting typeface bold and interesting typeface and use others as accents you can just use the others to support the main typeface you've used okay for example um i decide to type um graphic designers the most creative people on it and i'm to design just that stuff like and i choose to use um graphic designers now my main typeface here is the graphic designers and that is what i said i actually said about focal points my focal point is going to be these graphic designers okay in every design job there must always be a focal point and that is where you use your interesting typeface okay then under here i will type um the most creative people on it i know this word may be a maybe part of argument but i don't want you to argue about it just accept that fact that they are the most crazy people on earth okay just accept that fact and i want to use south gardens as my main typeface here graphic designers and i use Arial. let me use Arial as my support typeface okay now with this alone i've been able to create a very nice design graphic designers the most creative people on earth and it looks very cool and simple and nice but most people will go about breaking the text and giving it different typefaces it's not right at least two or one and three maximum in your design okay so that is how to choose a typeface i don't want to go far about talking about fonts okay there are different ways to use fonts now if you are using a, a calligraphic or a brush like this or a script font it should always be in title case you can't use a script font with capital letters it won't look nice at all i want to show you example like this text change case to uppercase okay you see how it looks like it's not looking nice at all but with title case it looks very cool well you can use every other one like this um straight font like this it looks very okay so that is it for how to use fonts okay then if you're using a bold font you can always use capital letters as well so my answer to your question is use only three fonts typeface on your design three type of typeface and use a maximum of three 
a minimum of graphic two, okay? designers q and a they're talking about color is a large topic that cannot be taught in one day but i'm going to break down a little i know about colors the color wheel for graphic design is a circle with different colored sections used to show the relationship between colors. The typical color wheel includes the blue, red, and yellow primary colors and the corresponding secondary colors are then green, orange, and violet or purple. The secondary colors are colors that come from mixing two primary colors. That is red plus blue gives purple. Red plus yellow gives orange and yellow plus blue gives green. Now you need to know how to combine colors in the color wheel and there are five rules to guide you when combining these colors in the color wheel. The first one is the complementary color combination which are two colors opposite each other in the color wheel and these colors will always appear brighter and more prominent and the other one is a monochromatic color combination this is the use of three shades tones and tints of one base color and it gives harmonious look to your design like the example you are seeing on the screen right now when you choose a particular color a particular color like maybe um orange the example you see here it has shades tones and tints and these colors make up the monochromatic color combination example if you are designing a one color job that is a a monochromatic color job that's one color this is the type of color combination you will use for that type of design and the next one is the analogous color combination these are three colors placed side by side in the color wheel like the example you are seeing right now now what you do is you choose a dominant color and use others as accents and the next one is the triadic color combination now these are three colors that are evenly spaced in the color wheel just like the red green and blue in the example this combination creates bold vibrant color palettes and it's always very nice when using them together and the last one is the tetradic color combination there are four colors that are evenly spaced on the color wheel like this example make one of them dominant and the others as accents now take this note the more colors on your palette the more difficult it is to balance so i prefer you choose the one that you know you'll be able to balance the colors very well like me i really use the complementary color combination and monochromatic color combinations because it's very easy to balance but when you choose the tetradic color combination which has four evenly spaced colors in the color wheel it's very hard to obey okay now for more information about colors you can go online and read articles on hue saturation and value shades tints and tone and also read about um colors and their meanings read about warm and cool colors in the color wheel and this is just a tip for you to learn more about colors because i just explained the little i can explain on this q and a video but if you want to go broadly read about these things i just mentioned to you now and i'll give you a website that can guide you on your color combinations especially for the beginners you can choose um color hunt choose um paletting and color lovers this website can always guide you on how to use your colors graphic designers q and a this q and a is good and the next question comes from samuel praise it says how do i tell a client a job price without guessing price and getting the client scared okay this happens to most graphic designers when a client asks how much will you charge this job and you start guessing price and at that point your clients will feel like you don't know what you're about to do and your clients will feel like you don't understand your job and you want to kill him with price okay now the simplest way i've said this before it's to set standards for all your designs choose the designs you do and give them your price tag of every design you do give price for your flyer design give the least price for all your designs then if any clients comes that you know they can pay more then you can increase the price to fit them according to their income okay 
it's not as if you know their income but you look at your clients and know how you charge your job that's just it sets price for all your jobs sets price for all your designs okay so you won't start guessing price like me i said it before i have my least price start for my flyer design is 1000 naira that's the least i can go so then i will keep on going higher by adding 500 500 500 depending on the level of that person and depending on how the job looks like the nature of the job okay so that's how to set prices and a real quick there is no standard price for designs all over the world there's no standard price for graphic designers to design a job all over the world you set your price based on your what you set your price based on what you know you can give to your audience you set your price based on the level of the person coming to get a job from you done you can't charge a, a person that earns uh, 10,000 naira a month the same price you charge a person that earns 100,000 naira a month there should be a big difference okay that is just a quick tip <laughs> you know you just have to be logical when doing this stuff graphic designers q and a this q and a is good and the next question comes from thompson and he says actually i started learning graphic design using corel draw on my own without anyone teaching me what to do and how to do what are the basic things i need to know well the basic things i will want you to know is the principles and elements of graphic design that's just or if you know the elements and principles of graphic design that is the basic thing you need to know about design the rules that guides graphic design and that is all and he also said how much can i charge for a logo flyer receipts and also on now, i've answered that question two times in this q and a so simply <laughs> take the answers of the others okay just know your words set your price tag for all your designs and get to know other graphic designers know what they charge and try to do same okay i think that's just for it and how can i improve on the little things i know to improve on the little things you know is doing what you know all the time if you know how to create a, a particular effect try to do that same effect time to time try to do that same effect time to time and you get used to it and as you are doing that same effect doing one thing a million times will help you to improve more on that thing okay so i don't have to go much that is the answer doing one thing a thousand times will help you to improve on that thing so the little things you know now keep on doing those little things those little things will open your eyes to see more than that and that is all graphic designers q and a this q and a is good and the last question comes from anil manka from india and it says what is golden ratio and how can i use golden ratio well this is going to be a lot of a uh, mathematical but i have to explain this for the understanding of everyone so let's look into this the golden ratio is a mathematical equation that is commonly found in nature but when applied to design it creates a beautiful and proportional aesthetic design the golden ratio is also known as the golden mean golden section or the divine proportion or in the greek it's called phi which is a number and that number is 1.618 the golden ratio was derived from the fibonacci sequence a sequence in which the next number in the sequence is a total of itself and the previous number starting from zero i know this is beginning to look mathematical and i need you to know that graphic design is about mathematics there are a lot of mathematical equations in graphic design so let's understand this very well now zero plus one gives one 1 plus 1 gives 2, 1 plus 2 gives 3, 2 plus 3 gives 5, 3 plus 5 gives 8, and 5 plus 8 gives 13. And that that's how it goes, like 8.13 gives 21, 13 plus 21 gives 34, and so on. Although the actual ratio is an irrational number that never resolves and that is 1.618339887.5 it can be functionally reduced to 
1 is to 1.618 and that is the ratio of an object which is pleasing to the eye that is to say every design you do if you follow the rules that got the that guards the golden ratio it means you can make a design that is pleasant to the eye so the golden ratio uses the mathematical symbol which is phi and it uses this circular symbol with a line it is best represented by a rectangle whose longer edge is 1.618 times the length of its shorter edge no matter the size of its shorter edge but it comes from an even shape an even square shape then you multiply it by 1.618 to get the longer side okay i know this is theoretical but i'm going to show you the practical part of it the golden spiral is a spiral which has a growth factor of phi it is found all over the natural and man-made world and it's inherently aesthetically pleasing to the eye whenever you use this golden ratio rules on your design it gives you a pleasing design now i'm going to show you how to create the golden rectangle the golden circles and the golden spiral it's very simple i'm going to show you how to do it with corel draw so let's go to corel draw and this is the practical part of the golden ratio how to create it and how to use it okay now the first thing you need to do is to draw a shape a square shape like this and it doesn't matter the size of the square shape it can be any shape at or any size but the sides of the shape must be even must be equal the four sides must be equal just like this remember the formula we talked about before the length of the shape multiplied by 1.618 and that is the the golden ratio that's the number the the five that's the number we are talking about 1.618 so we are going to duplicate this shape like this and multiply the number here by 1.618 and one of the sides is 944.0 pixel with this shape has the equal size of 944.0 pixel so i'm going to multiply it by 1.618 now 944.0 times 1.618 is 1527.372 so i'm going to type in here 1527.392 okay so this is the standard size okay i'm going to place this inside press l select and press l and that's how it goes the square shape is here and the remaining part of the shape is and this is how we continue creating square shapes of even sides on it till we get to the least shape okay let's do this press control on your keyboard while creating this shape so you have a equal shape okay okay and i'll create it here again I'll create it here again press control so you get a square shape okay I'll do this here again I'll do this here again I think it should be up here so and I'll do this here again and lastly here so this is how to make the golden rectangle this is how it's actually done the golden rectangle now from this golden rectangle we are going to create the golden circle so i'm going to duplicate this while we make the golden circle press control your keyboard and draw this circle so you get a even circle and you can place it at the center 
and enlarge it till it fits the square shape very well like this duplicate it again and do the same to this and reduce it till it fits this very well like this and do the same here okay now this is how to draw a golden circle now to draw a golden spiral i also duplicate this it's very simple this time you click on the circle we drew okay i think i'm going to delete all these circles off then pick a circle and draw this and make sure your circle path crosses here your circle path crosses the lines okay that's how it done your circle path must cross the the edges the angle facing each other in the shape like this you can see how mine is drawn maybe it's not too perfect but this is actually what we want to get then you click on arc and click on shape tool and take your arc here and here arc and that's how it's done and we continue reducing this you can mirror this this way and reduce it bring it to this edge drag it here okay and duplicate this again and mirror it this way sorry okay and that is how it's actually done if i've not made any mistake and this is actually how it's done if i've not made any mistake okay now i'm going to use these circles to create a fish actually i have to take off all these circles select all the circles and press c then bring them here and press e okay and these are the standard circles that can be used to create anything you want to create let me delete this off anything you want to create that's how it's actually done and okay let me pick this shape and duplicate it like this i want to create a fish using this golden circle maybe um it can form a logo then i'm going to pick this it's too small pick this here now duplicate i'll use this other circle here so now i want to use this to create a fish logo like this it's very simple i'm doing this for the beginner so it's so simple for them okay i know the professionals now to do this more than they know how to do it very well okay but this is actually for beginners and for those that care to know how to start maybe after this you can watch more tutorials on how to design a logo with this golden ratio and select these two circles and click on intersect then delete this and this off select this and this and intersect sorry and trim then take this off then you can weld these two together and this forms a fish okay this forms a fish and that's how to use a golden ratio to design a logo and there are so many logos out there that have been done with this golden ratio like the twitter logo the pepsi logo and many other logos that have been done with the the golden ratio okay so it takes time to learn this for the start you can start little but as time goes on you get to understand it more the more you do it the more you get used to it okay so that's how it's actually done and it's not only with logo designs there are other ways of um, applying this golden ratio to other design like photography you can also apply it on a building design you can also apply it 
in your print designs okay the golden ratio works across every natural thing every man-made stuff also on it okay the golden ratio is a standard number for that let me show you some examples of how this golden ratio has been applied welcome back i hope you love those examples i shown and you can see how the golden ratio was applied to that building and also applied to that little those little animals and that's how the golden ratio works it applies to everything when you know how to use this golden ratio very well you'll be able to apply this professionality this professionalism in your design when you use the golden ratio very well you apply it to your design it makes your design to be pleasant to the eye it makes your design to be very cool and professional so this is the little i can tell you about the golden ratio i'll put links down in the description where you can watch videos on how to use golden ratio to design logos and every other stuff like that and for more emphasis i'll put links down in the description where you watch videos on that and this brings us to the end of this graphic designers q and a and i want to appreciate everyone that sees their time to send their questions for this q and a video thank you so much for your questions and as many of you that are watching this video i thank you so much without you this video would make no sense thank you so much for watching this video and if you have more questions about graphic design more questions about me more questions about my youtube channel more questions about what i'm doing here and how i became a graphic designer i will gladly answer your questions send your questions down to my send your questions to my dm my links are down below where you can contact and send your questions and i'll be very happy to answer that when this channel hits 1000 subscribers and that will be so 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 great thank you so much for watching this video i will see you next time